What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we... Well, we had a lot happen as K basically knocked us out or rendered us immobile so that he could throw us through the door. Fi and I are now in the security room, and we have no idea what happened to K and Dio, let alone Quark, Temyoji, and Clover. Well, we have a decent idea of what Temyoji, Clover, and uh, Quark's fate was, but... We, we, we don't talk about that. So, regardless though, we have a puzzle to solve now. So let's, I guess let's start by looking at what's in front of us. All these monitors. This must be the main monitoring station. All nine of the screens are dark though. Probably aren't powered up. I wouldn't be surprised if this is what eventually displayed the different passwords. Looks like it. So, how do we turn them on? What kind of a question is that? There's probably some switches or something around here somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Can we take a look at this control panel? Hey, I just rubbed it a little and it turned on. I don't think the rest is going to be that easy, though. Look at the screen. Yeah, so it looks like there's a password input. Mm, looks like a login screen. I think we need to put in a password. Okay, I'll give it a shot. We obviously don't know the password yet, so we'll leave that as is. Ugh, what's the password? Let's look around a little more. Maybe we can find some kind of clue. Right. A long console, there's a screen in the middle of it. This is probably the main console. Okay, um, I wanted to make sure I, I... Well, I guess I was wondering if I can interact with the other parts of the console. It doesn't seem so. A yellow chair sits before me. Okay. We'll head over to the right, I guess. Are these speakers? Hmm, speakers. Yeah, they look pretty normal. Okay. What about down here? Anything there? No, doesn't seem so. What is this over here? So this is the red chair. It's a chair. Yep, and it's red. <laughs> and we've got a big screen up top as well. It's a blank. Or it's blank. Yeah, nothing at all. Is there a power button or something down there? That's a pretty big screen, but there's nothing on it. Okay. Then let's take a look. Can we activate this monitor? This one's the same. I barely touched it and it's ready to go. Yeah, it's showing the same thing too. The question is, are they going to be the same password or different? Ooh, we got a whole little area over there too. Oh, it wanted me to... Interesting. I wanted to take a look at this little section over here. So, can I... There we go. Some binders. Darn, I can't understand a word of this. It looks like some kind of code. All these binders are like that. Shoot. Well, that's not good. Um, we have more of these monitors. Notably, red on top, yellow in the middle, and blue in the bottom. I wonder what this is. Dunno. Looks like a machine of some sort. Tall machine, no idea what it does. Hopefully nothing bad. Anything in the bottom quarters of it? No. Can we pull out a particular binder? No. We probably need to find whatever it is that we can decipher those um, binders with. I didn't want to come up here. I wanted to turn around and check out this area over here. Wow. Sorry about that uh, noise in the background. Um, let's see. Probably going to be the same thing here. That's a big screen. Blank, though. I don't think the power's on. Yep, I agree with you there, bud. A chair. Yes, and a green one at that. Okay, similarly, probably a password. Yep, this one's switching on just like the other two. Looks like it. Okay, got some binders over here as well. Some binders. They're full of code that I can't read. And then a locker we can open. And of course, it's got nine switches. These maybe correspond to the nine different monitors. Looks like we've got nine switches. There's a little Thunderbolt icon up here. My guess is these are a bunch of power switches. Hmm. They're all red. Does that mean they're all off? How about you try and flip some of them? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Did you hear something? Yeah, I did. Kind of a starting up sound. Makes sense. So let's turn on all of these for the time being. and see what the result is. So now that we've done that, oh, so we can see the different cameras. This is inside one of the AV rooms, and we have the different warehouses, right? And then on the left, is that Gollum's Bay? Yes, the rec room, the... Is that the infirmary? I don't remember. There's the crew quarters. This is the treatment center? 
Oh, there's like, that's right, there's like the infirmary, the treatment center, and the lab, and they're all different. <laughs> but then the bottom right, there's the lounge. So, okay. Uh, these are from security cameras? I thought so. Hey, what about Temyoji Clover and Quark? Can you see them anywhere? You can see just as well as I can. There's nobody there. No Dio or K either. Might as well take a good look at it, though. Darn, nothing. I guess for what it's worth, I mean, they are static angles, they don't encompass everything of those rooms, and the rooms that we've already been to, we wouldn't expect to be beyond the chromatic, the white chromatic doors, right? Hmm. The real question is, why is that pertinent to the puzzle-solving process this time around? Not really sure. Something I do want to note, though, is uh, there are these colors on the stairs, right? So the top stair is blue, and then green, and then yellow, and then cyan, magenta, and red. And that's probably not a coincidence. So I guess we'll head up here now and see what's going on up on this side. Over here we have two... what are these? Hourglass with red sand? An hourglass. Looks like the sand inside is red. <laughs> Something's engraved on the top. Looks like a number four. Four? What the heck does that mean? Well, given the purpose of most hourglasses, I'd guess it means that this is a four second clock. In other words, it'll take four seconds for all the sand to run through it after you flip it. Huh. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It's also worth noting, in this structure here, the triangles sort of make out that sun symbol that we've been seeing quite a bit. An hourglass with yellow sand that has an 11 on it, so it's going to take 11 seconds for the sand to go through, right? An hourglass full of yellow sand, it has 11 carved onto the top. Okay. So we have an 11 and a 4, which is good to know. Anything over here? Hmm, do you think this does something? It looks weird, but I'm pretty sure they're just shelves. A set of shelves made up of 8 hexagons. There are triangles wedged in between the hexagons. That's true. Is there anything relevant, though? What about the couch? A sofa. Seems perfectly normal. Okay, what about this button over here? What happens when we press that? Is this a lion? What's it got in its mouth? It's some kind of button, right? Ah, uh, yes, of course. More imagery of the lion eating, or a lion eating the sun. It looks like you can push it. I can barely make it out, but I think there's something carved on the surface. A sun? Wait, so is this lion eating the sun? Yeah. Whatever. Right now we need to focus on getting out of here. I'm gonna push that button. That okay? Yeah, sure. Here's the real question, what happens? Whoa! The light's turned off. I guess it's a light switch. Okay. What's gonna be different about the place in the dark? Ooh. So they're sort of inverted colors of each other. I guess we'll interact with it, though I'm not sure what to do with it yet. A strange looking set of shelves. Hey, check it out. It's all lit up. Yeah, pretty colorful. Do you think it's a hint? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it very well could be. Um, but at the same time, it's just inverted over there, so I'm not really sure what that does. Hmm. Is there anything down here that's relevant? In the dark? On the stairs, maybe? Okay. So... Huh. I, um... I'm not sure how to interpret this. It looks like a bunch of gibberish, but it certainly isn't, right? Um, there's no way some of these are straight up anagrams, right? There's gotta be, they've gotta be relevant to the code. Can I interact with them? I can, okay, cool. There are letters on the front of the step underneath the red line. T-M-J-Y-U-V-G-J. Okay, there are letters on the front of the step underneath the magenta line, they say that. Okay, and so forth. Hmm. Why? What's their meaning? Where can I even interact with something that would be relevant to, like, uh, an hourglass, right? There are letters on the front of the step underneath the yellow line, they say SGDQ, SGDQ, hype, um, NY, ADGB, under green. Yeah, that's what it says. And then under the blue it says, huh, E-S-D-M-A-S. Reading them backwards doesn't do much. I mean, even the smaller ones, right? Like A-D-G-B 
Can I really do much with that? I don't know. Yeah, there's like not really much I can make with that. So the question is, how do we interpret that? All I can think of is now we maybe take a look at the binders, see if they can help us out. This is pointless. It's too dark for me to see anything. Okay. The only other thing is maybe um, these are the passwords. And I guess we're supposed to use the chair color to correspond to which word it is. So what do we need? We need red, green, and yellow, I think. So let's take a look at these again. Under red, we have what? In red, we have T, M, J, Y, U, V, G, J. Okay. And then underneath the yellow, we are, let's start with green, I guess. So green is A, D, G, B. And then blue will represent the, the yellow, which is S, G, D, Q, N, Y. Okay. So let's go ahead and give these a go to see if they're the password. We probably need to turn the lights back on. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Now let's head back down. I guess we can start with green over here. Or no, I guess we're in front of yellow. So this is going to be the blue password, right? Which I believe was SGDQNY. Okay. SGDQNY. Check. Lovely. So that confirms that, which is nice. Did it work? Yeah, I guess so. Good job. Huh, cakewalk. Sure. Did you see this icon? The one in the upper left corner. Yeah. What does it do? Let's click on it. Is this icon supposed to be an hourglass? Touch and find out. Right. Determine the value in seconds for each hourglass, then fill in the blanks. If the value is a single digit number, place a zero before it. So... Determine the value. I'm not sure I understand the, uh... I'm not sure I really understand what I'm supposed to do at the moment. Because I don't really think these are, like, changing, per se, right? I'm not, like, changing the values of anything here. I mean, I know the red and the green hourglasses, right? Because I found those. Darn it, I can't figure this out. What are you talking about? This is a cakewalk. You just have to see how many seconds each of those hourglasses counts and enter those numbers at the bottom of the screen. Make sense? I know that, I just... Yeah, th that hardly seems like a puzzle. It's more of like a... Find the hourglasses. I guess maybe the one thing to consider is... Which, let's see, I have yellow and I have red. Can I figure out the rest or deduce the rest from that? So, uh, do I have to remember my color wheel? Was it red and green that made yellow? So, could we then deduce that green is seven? Something like that. Is that what we're supposed to do? Because the red is four, and if red plus green gives us the yellow, green would have to then be seven. But we can't really go much further than that, can we? We can't figure out magenta, cyan, or blue. So we've got to find at least one more. So let's investigate these for now. So let's look at the green password here. Memo ADGB. Lovely. Ha! This one's done too. Hmm, same results as before. And another icon up in the corner. Okay. Represents the, or resembles those shelves on the left. I wonder what this icon means. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Okay, on it. Change the colors to the correct ones by clicking the hexagons and triangles. Remember that you only have four moves to complete this puzzle. Does it change neighboring stuff? It does. Okay, so it's that type of a, of a, I guess, puzzle. So we want to make, well, really either option, right? Where all the red, all the hexagons are red or all of the, um, 
Oh, so I guess actually, are they gonna make it fairly easy for us? No. So I guess I'm trying to think, do we want to start off with... Oh, maybe one of them is for the escape password and the other is for the golden file. So, I don't know, I guess we'll start with... Um, what do we want to start with? Green? Yeah. I was like, which one seems the most easily obtainable, but... Oh, you figured it out. Not bad. And my reward? Ha, nice try. Looks like Zero's got something for you, though. You mean this new icon? Right. So, make a mental note, or I guess you guys can't remind me, but I've got to come back here and probably try the other one. Hmm? What was that noise? Nothing happened on the screen. Look up. The one over your head. Huh? I was you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's not much of a sentence. It just says, I was you. Hmm. I was you. It says, I was you on the screen. Okay. Can I interact with this again? Now that I've solved the puzzle, it doesn't do anything when I touch it. Oh, interesting. So maybe they have a similar puzzle, but on the other side. And that's what we have to do it for. Okay. Alright, fine. You better get this right, Sigma. Oh, yeah. Well, we know the red password is TMJYUVGJ. T-M-J-Y-U-J-G-J, I believe, right? No, it's Y-U-V-G-J. Darn. Y-U-V-G-J. Okay. And we're in. Okay, done. Good. That's all of them, then. Oh, well done. Would it really kill you to take that disdain down, like, 10%? <laughs> yes. Look at the corner of the screen. Yeah, yeah, an icon. Alright, so we'll click on this one and enter probably a similar minigame. I've seen this icon before. It's just like the one on the other side. So that would mean change the colors. And so in this one, I think we want to make... What was it? All of the central ones green? Because we made them all red. No, we made them all green last time, so we want to try to make them all red. I think that, like... Oh, I thought that might have been, like, the, the bait. Um, how do we want to do this? That's not gonna do it, is it? I'm trying to remember, did we do them all red last time, or did we do them all green? I think we did it all green, right? Maybe not, though. This would turn, like, almost the entire thing green. So, what do we want to do, then? None of the hexagons touch each other. Which is why I'm a little bit confused. Does the order of doing this matter? No, because I'm going to be missing one regardless. Hmm. So none of the hexagon... Oh, can I can touch the triangles though, can't I? I can! That's what I was missing. I was like... This doesn't compute if I have to change the hexagon colors by clicking on the hexagons. I can only change one at a time. Alright, so yeah, we've got to work with the triangles here. So, if we want to change them all to red or green. I'm not sure. Ah, I wish I remembered. <laughs> I think we changed them all to green last time. So, let's try and change everything to red. So, if we do that... No, that's not it. So that is really efficient. There we go. I am very glad that I realized I could click on the triangles too. And I'm pretty sure that they said that. You can click on the hexagons of the triangles. It was just, I was so fixated on the hexagons. Anyways, ha! Huh. How do you like that, puzzle? It's too early to celebrate. Check your screen. You've got a new icon. You've got mail. What are you doing? This is just like the other one. Look up. So I was you will be me. What the heck's that? It's not even a sentence. Will be me. Hmm. I was you and will be me. Right? I was you and will be me. So let's write that down. I 
was you and will be me. I was you will be me. How can we interact with that, right? Mix and match the, the different words into some semblance of a sentence. I don't think we can use all of those words in one sentence that's grammatically correct. I was you will be me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That says will be me and it has a period at the end. Which might be relevant. On this one there's no punctuation. Hmm. I was you will be me. What does that mean though? What does that mean? And then why do we need to see these monitors here? What's relevant in them? I guess I wonder if it's relevant when we, can we turn these off again? We can. The question is, why would we want to do that? Right? Why is turning off the cameras still relevant? Rebooting them didn't change the monitor. Some binders, they're full of code that I can't read. I feel like we're at our first little impasse here. Is that supposed to be green at the bottom? Hmm. And I still just have my hourglasses. Can I combine them? Okay, I didn't think so. Hmm. Anything else relevant up here? Not anymore, I don't think. I guess we can turn the lights off again, and now that we have those monitors active, see if there's anything different. So that was green and then the red, and that was red and the green. So we got both of those. Nothing looks significantly different. We didn't use three of the different passwords from the stairs. But I don't think we can even work with those at the moment. Hmm. I don't think we can... I don't think we can do that one with the hourglasses yet. How can I figure out... what the different hourglasses represent? I have yellow and I have red, so I can maybe reason out green, right? But with only green, red, and yellow, I don't think I can figure out the rest. Or no, I, I should be able to, right? No, because yellow's not... Hmm. I guess green could be yellow and blue. Maybe that's what they... Maybe what's, that's how I can try and figure it out. Let's um, let's try that. Floating in the darkness, a yellow chair simply exists. Oh, so they're gonna make me, they're gonna make me turn the lights back on before I can do that. Or can I interact with the, the control panel? I can, okay, cool. So let's think here, right? So if red is going to be four, yellow is going to be 11, green is seven, and if green is yellow plus blue, that would mean blue would also be four, wouldn't it? Which I don't really feel that great about. So green would be seven, yellow is 11, and then the magenta is red and blue, right? So that would be zero, eight. 
I was gonna say, I don't feel very confident in that. The other thing though, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> They're telling me basically how many seconds there are just from counting, right? So if I look at this, I don't know why I can actually flip these and play them. Maybe, oh, so I'm supposed to be able to measure them. I was thinking I could literally just look at the rows and count them, right? Yeah, and that would be relevant. <laughs> I thought I had to like figure it out and find them and stuff, but no, that's, and so this is actually a pretty cool thing um, that you could theoretically do, but I don't think this is the intended route per se, right? So I could click retry and maybe flip the blue and the red and then go with that. And I could say, oh, I've got three left in blue. So blue is probably three. And then, I don't know, I could retry, flip this one and flip this one and then hit play. And then um, green has two left, right? So green is gonna be two more than blue. So if blue had three after red, that would mean red is four and blue is zero seven. And then if green has two more than that, that's gonna be zero nine. We know yellow is 11 and we can probably count honestly and say that uh, orange or not orange or magenta why did I say orange <laughs> magenta is gonna be 15 but just for the sake of it let's just do this real quick yeah that's what it looks like so that's how you figure that out interesting I, I, I got fixated on having to find the timers but nope anyways ha got it hmm not bad. There's another icon on the screen now. Yes, there is. Hey, look! The screen's changed. Huh? How did they change? What the heck is this? There's a different word on each one. I guess we're supposed to shuffle them around until they make a sentence. How? Well, look at the screen underneath them. It's got the same words in nine squares. So I'm supposed to use that console to move the words around? That would be my guess. Okay, let's give this a shot then. Okay, um... So... The three different, I guess, lines would be I was you, um, will be me, and then she knows everything, right? So if I do I was you um, will be me and then she knows everything but that's not going to work so we have to put this into why are there two periods right hmm Okay, so let's think about this. Um, the word knows, what could be before that? The only subject for that verb could be she, right? So we know it's gonna be she knows something. Um, so let's maybe do she knows what? She knows me or she knows everything? I think we have to use me here because if we don't, then, well, we figured out already that the other six words can't be used to make a full sentence. Even then. Interesting. You will be everything I was? No. If everything is the end, Then, in fact, we actually need to rearrange these up top. It's like something like, she knows you will be me. I was everything. Hmm. Let me, let me read the instructions again. Darn it, no dice. Get a hold of yourself. I'm discounting on you. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Rearrange the words to create a specific sentence. Not all of the words are needed, however. The unneeded words should be erased. Oh! <laughs> so that makes a really big difference, right? So not all of the words will be needed. 
We have to make a very specific sentence. It's probably that the monitors on the left and right are the unnecessary words. So if that's the case, what we can do is we can do something like she knows everything and then just get rid of the, the monitor. Huh, I won't, we don't need some of these words, you know, you think? Okay, so we have to choose the monitors based on how it looks now, right? So we're gonna wanna use the bottom right three in that corner, but they're probably not gonna let me change the switches. Yep, the whole room is dark because the room is dark. Okay, so we'll go back and uh, turn the lights back on. And head on back down. Wait, what? There are words on the nine screens above me. I guess I'm supposed to make a specific sentence with them. I swear, did I not click on the uh, this thing here, the cabinet? Oh, it probably just took me back down to that because I went down the stairs. All right, so we'll click on this. And that is probably what we need, right? So let's try and rearrange those now. Pair of icons, yes, let's click on these. So we'll go with she knows everything. Yes, no, maybe. Oh, it really had to be in the bottom row. <laughs> And that's, uh, that, that would have been frustrating if it didn't count. Anyways, ha, just as I thought. Yeah, it looks like you got it. Good work. Nothing's changed, though. Well, at least not here. Yeah, take a look at the screens up on the wall. So, there's blue. And... Okay. So, this is probably going to be our... Hidden file password? Maybe? This is... Good work, Sigma. I've been waiting for this. A new safe password, huh? Yeah, let's go open it. So let me check real quick. You found a safe password. So we're gonna navigate to the pass. Oh wait, no, that's not the right one. Archive. So this is the hidden file password, right? I think so. So then what's the escape password? Um, I guess, what else can we interact with still? Can we interact with this? Rearrange the words, create a specific sentence. Okay. No good. I can't get it to work. Fly seems to think maybe some of these words aren't necessary. So yeah, this is what we need to work with in order to get the escape password. I was you will be me. Hmm. Maybe maybe we'll try I will be you. Maybe? I don't know. I don't remember. So all the different words, right? Where their locations were on the monitor. So I don't know which ones we want to disable. So we probably want to get rid of she knows everything. And it needs to involve me, right? You will be me, maybe? So if we, were, if we want to do that, we need the top left and the top two, or top two, like upper left, and then the middle and then the bottom left. So let's go ahead and do that. And take a look. So let's go ahead and do, you will be me. Me, me, maybe. We have to rearrange it like so. Um, hmm. So given we already formed one sentence involving everything, I feel like the other one has to involve me. Hmm. It has to end in me or everything. So I guess let's take a look at this again and think about what the different um, options could be. So let's say it ends in everything, right? We could say, I was everything. That's one option. I was everything. She was everything. I 
no. So it's either, so we already use she knows everything. It's I was everything or that's pretty much it, right? I was everything or she was everything. What about if it ends in me? This is also assuming that it's going to be um, a three word sentence, right? What if it ends in me? I was me, everything was me, she was me. That doesn't make sense, actually. Actually, yeah, none of those are grammatically correct. Was is a, a linking verb, so the, the predicate should have subject pronouns, right? So it technically should be like, I was I, or she was she. So, so what does that tell us? That's actually, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but that tells us that our verb for the sentence that ends in me can't be a linking verb, right? It can't be was or will be. So she knows me. Let's try that. She knows me. So top left and then the bottom right corner. She, oh wait, no. Let's see, gotta click on this again to try it every time. She knows me? No? So I guess, I guess maybe then we expand, right? And say maybe it's not just a three word sentence now. I was you and will be me. We could try I will be you and you will be me. Did I already try you will be me? I think I did. Or I will be everything. There are just so many combinations that I don't really want to try. And I don't think I have much of a clue to go off of, do I? We haven't interacted with this at all, have we? Some binders. They're full of code that I can't read. It's all machine, no idea what it does. Hopefully nothing bad. Can I really not interact with this? I feel like that would be kind of odd. But maybe. I mean, at this point, this is the only thing I can really interact with, right? I can try to do that. Can I try this icon? No. So it's got to be the monitor. It's got to be this last puzzle, right? Huh. So three word sentences. I mean, she knows everything. She knows me. I was everything. You could try that. I was everything. It's really kind of a pain though. <laughs> to have to go back to the switches and click off the different monitors and then I think it was this Hopefully and then close the door and then scroll back over and then click on this click on the icon be told to do this again I, I, I wish the minigame was just um I don't know like I could right click to make the tiles disappear and could just rearrange stuff on the spot um, well, is there some, there's maybe a clue that I'm missing, but given how the different passwords go, not so certain. I'm shocked that we got the hidden file password first. So the escape password. Now I gotta turn on the monitors to look at all the words again. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean... I don't know.
There's I will be everything, you will be everything, she will be everything. It's not really like jumping out to me. I don't know if it should, right? She knows everything. I can't even really think of much of a clue that led me to that, aside from it was the only you know set of three words that weren't on the other two monitors, right? But I don't think I can make a sentence out of the other six words. Not without, not with all of them, that is. I don't know if I want to go through trying, I will be me, you will be me, she will be me, she will be everything, I will be everything, you will be everything, she was everything, I was everything. Hmm. She knows me. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm going to look this one up. Those are all the combinations of words that I can think of. Or that would make sentences from this subset and um, given the punctuation involved at least. And none of them jump out as being particularly correct. So I think rather than sit here for 10 minutes and go back to the monitor switches and turn on the monitors. I think I'm just gonna see if one of those was correct or not. Because I don't think I'll be able to come up with it if it's not. So it's not even actually a sentence in the end. Um, so it's instead you have to make a password, I guess, or some, you basically just have to use the words on the two monitors. So naturally I said, oh, looking at these two and I had to make a sentence and said, oh, she knows everything is a sentence I can make if I eliminate the words that were shown on the monitor, which makes sense. But if the mini game itself says, rearrange the words to create a specific sentence. Well, then I'm not gonna think, again, I, I specifically said you can't make a complete sentence with um, the six words that are shown on the monitor, but but I guess that's what the actual password is. For the escape password, at least. So we're just supposed to mimic what's on the monitors. So, oh wait, I actually have to go back to the, the mini game. So I will say, I think it's a bit misleading the, the instructions here, but oh well. Um, I was you and then will be me. And that'll get us our escape password. Ooh, nice work. Look, the screen's changed. Yeah, it's a different password this time. All right, this password is different. You memorized it? Yeah, I got this. So now we can go to the safe and find out what item is hidden in here because this is something that couldn't have really played much of a role in the other timelines. If, given how far along in the timeline this room is, it's unlikely whatever item is super important or was accessed for earlier events in other timelines. Although we do know from Golem's Bay that that's not necessarily the case, right? Same save as before, probably open it the same way too. We just need to plug in the right password. Yeah, give it a try. Cool. So we're going to take a look, go for the, the blue password, which is the suns in the lower right corner. Let's see what that gives us. Excellent. It opened. Yeah. I'm excited to actually take a look at all of these files, right? We've collected quite a few at this point, and uh, we haven't looked at any of them. I mean, understandably so. Some of you said that they could be a little bit spoilery, so we'd want to avoid them, which is why I'm glad that we are. But um, anyway, so we have moon, star, and then moon. So moon, moon, and then star. And that should be it. So yeah, let's see what item we have here. It opened. So it did. This card looks familiar. Different image, though. Yeah, it's one of the AB room cards. Well, I guess there are two of them, actually. These are the star keys the announcer was talking about. And then we've got the same key as usual. Okay. 
Anything else? Okay, let's get going. There's nothing else? Oh, that's pretty disappointing. However, now I guess we can at least start uh, to try and see what happened to everybody else. Now that we can actually escape, we can see what happened to K. What happened to Dio? What about Temyoji? Quark, Clover, right? The lock for the door. It says lock. I'm gonna open it, okay? You ready? Yes, of course I am. Get on with it. Right. Here we go, then. Three, two, one. I don't remember how many BP both Phi and Sigma have, but they can play one more round. Oh, this could be interesting. I don't remember how much they have. Is it seven? Is it seven? Is it six? Can I check? Can I check? Is that somewhere in the archive? I don't think it is. But what I'm thinking is, if Phi and Sigma are the only people alive, right? They'll be able to play this AB game, and it might be the last time they're able to play the AB game. Because in order to play it again in the, the following rounds, they would have to find all of the dead people and obtain all of their bracelets if they wanted to go through the relevant doors to play through the AB game again. Yeah, because they would have to enter more rooms to get more AB cards, etc. Although, didn't they talk about the star cards being able to be used, you know, a certain number, or, you know, indefinitely, essentially? I'm not sure how that works. Can So I guess they could wait a certain amount of time and then try again, but they might not be their opponents, right? So they would still have to find everybody else's bracelets and stuff. But, huh. Or I guess if they were pairs. No, not even if they're pairs. There only really needs to be one from each trio. So maybe that's not as problematic as I thought. However, I will say... Overall, the security room was pretty cool. Um, I didn't like the escape password, but that's not a huge deal. Overall, it was pretty neat. And I'm looking forward, I'm really looking forward to figuring out what's going on on the other side of this door. When we can go back to the warehouse, when we can try to find everybody else. I think things are going to get pretty tragic. And I wonder, yeah, I wonder. I wonder if everything's going to be okay. But... Anyways, of course, that's going to be in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one or looking forward to the next. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.